Okay lah. Good morning. Sorry, I got here last in another meeting, but I'm glad to be here. Uh, morning. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Morning, Steve. Uh, great. Uh, I think we had uh, scheduled this meet. Uh, as usual, we sent an update to the larger group, and uh, we invited. Uh, it's only that. Uh, the few that come are the ones who are really committed to this task. Uh, but I know there are many of us out there uh, who I have had a chat with, and uh, they concur that whatever we are discussing, we're actually on the right step. So <coughs> don't get discouraged about the numbers that show up for these meetings. I think we demonstrate that uh, this particular agenda is very important, uh, particularly on uh, what's happening at the moment. Uh, let me just give you an update. Uh, I've been able to engage a few leads in Kenya Wildlife Service uh, to find out how we coordinate, and I've already informed them that uh, we are mobilizing uh, whatever we can from the conservation fraternity uh, to support them in the ways that we can. And so one of uh, the actions that we've done, which Sheila will share with you, is having received the goodwill from um, Kenya Wildlife Service so that at least they're also aware of the initiatives that we are taking, is now to see how we connect our uh, interventions uh, together also with what they are thinking in mind uh, so that again, we are coordinated in a proper manner. So we'll be discussing that today to see how we can enhance that uh, coordination with the various initiatives that are taking place. Uh, John had also mentioned in our previous meeting that there are also several organizations that are making intervention. Uh, indeed, I've learned also that there are several initiatives that are taking place. This week, you'll be following the announcement. The Cabinet Secretary for Water, uh, Cecil Kaluki, I think, uh, has been supporting Wale County in ensuring that uh, water access is delivered there. So again, we'll be looking at also trying to reach out to various government initiatives that are also taking place uh, to see how we can also get some support from them. Uh, I also intend to reach out to corporates, uh, particularly on the issue of uh, fuel. Uh, I've already gotten some leads to start talking to a few corporates to see uh, particularly corporates like Total, and see whether they can uh, they can come in also and chip in something small to contribute. So again, I'm doing a, a database of trying to find out which Total petrol stations are close uh, to those areas uh, that we have already identified, so that we can see the kind of help that we can give. So I think this week is basically the week where we'll be circulating awareness. Uh, not only to the members, but to other like-minded individuals uh, so that we can raise the required resources uh, for us to start making interventions uh, on the ground. I have uh, not been successful to have a meeting with Nancy Kabete to discuss the security issue, <coughs> but I'm still going to pursue that. And once that opportunity opens up, I will be able to let you know how uh, we can collaborate with Kenya Wildlife Service to see how to document the, uh, the deaths and also the poaching incidents that uh, have been reported uh, in the newspaper. So having said that, uh, I would love, first of all, to ask Sheila uh, so that we she shares with us uh, a draft that we have come up, which we call <coughs> a fundraising kind of banner uh, so that we can uh, have a look at it, uh, probably even consider editing it. And if we adopt it, then we'll use that banner as uh, a way of trying to mobilize uh, uh, Kenyans and uh, also a way of trying to mobilize resources. So, Shita, could you project uh, what you've put together so that we can discuss it first and then we can go and receive updates from uh, Rabia and John and anybody else who will join us? No. So Sheila, can you project the banner?
I'm doing that, Steve, in a few. Okay. Oh, I'm having challenges, but I'm sharing. Guys, in the meanwhile, I've shared the name of the petrol stations in our area on the chat. We don't have total or we just have like a small one called Hela mm -hmm. in Minjila. And then in Mokoi, we only have Gulf Energy. Hela petrol station. Yeah, I mean, Jilla, this Gulf Energy, and then in uh, Kipini, hmm. there's just those, um, I mean, those kind of unbranded ones. Okay. I'm not sure where they source their fuel from, but uh, they're the only ones in that area, so. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that feedback. Welcome. <clears throat> Uh, Steve, John. John yes, John. Yes, John. We we have Shell, Shell, and uh, and Total in Kajado Town as well. So they are big stations. Excellent. I think at times it's good to to have an idea which petrol stations are there, so that we are we are clear in terms of our ask. Because I know most of these corporates, when we approach them, they also look at it from a business perspective. Sheila, lead us, lead us through. Uh, can you see the poster? Yes, we can. Uh, okay. Uh, so I created this poster to be able to share it with our members. Um, and also we can share with our partners upon approval from KWS because last time we did a campaign online. Uh, they had an issue that they had not authorized such um, a campaign. Um, so basically, um, it talks about a brief about the drought. Um, and, um, Rabia, is that you or? I could hear you, Sheila, for a minute. Uh, okay. Um, so this poster um, is meant to be shared with our members to just fundraise for the um, different areas uh, that we are working in to help uh, reduce the uh, drought effects on wildlife. Um, and so under um, the explanation, I have written that drought was declared a national disaster in Kenya. In cases of human wildlife um, conflict, sorry, cases of human wildlife conflict are on the rise because the wildlife have left their habitat to search for in search for water and food. Communities and wildlife are suffering. Our teams are on the ground working with KWS to ensure we get the necessary support. You can also support. Uh, donate for drought relief. And I have indicated, or rather, I used CAK uh, bank details for donations. So when people donate uh, for this particular drought relief, then monies will be dispersed to different head of areas, um, Rabia, uh, Kahindi, John, and other, uh, and others that we have. Um, so I don't know if there's any change to be made on this poster or if it's okay. I am here to listen and make the corrections. Okay, so the floor is open for comments. Mm, I don't have a comment. I think it looks fine. Um, I have a comment. Okay. Um, one is um, save wildlife. Uh, that should be one word. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think that 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 is that is good. That is I think that is the most glaring, glaring. Um. Mm, okay. 
Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'll still, I'll probably write back and, and just, we can work around the wording um, mm -hmm. to make it very succinct. Uh, sure. But the call, is, the call is very clear. The call is very clear. Okay, okay. I will share it on WhatsApp maybe so that uh, you yeah. can have it and you can make the, any corrections. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Excellent. I also think it's a, it's a, it's a good start. Uh, in terms of uh, how we can improve it so that uh, we can send it out. Uh, I think my, 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 my quick thought would be for us to agree whether we want to use images of a live animal or we want to depict what's happening on the ground, whether we want to show images of really animal suffering out there. Very good, very good, Steve. Yeah, I like that. I mean, and I have some images of really, really bad images of wildlife. If I mean, if we really want okay. to make a strong point, mm -hmm. probably it will, it will be easier. It will, it will, it will touch people if you actually use uh, to, to see suffering. You know, like when these other relief organizations do mm -hmm. do campaigns, they actually use images of from the ground that makes um, makes people respond. Okay, please share the images with me. Okay, I can share that anyway. Yeah, okay. so, so, so let's gather as many images as we can. And then when we make the write up succinct as John has proposed, uh, there are probably two critical areas. Is we need to have a small uh, write up on what the situation on the ground is and what action is required. And then how you can support uh, to mitigate that. So what images speak louder and then the words lead people to an action. So yeah. if we can play around with that, I think it would be very good. Then Sheila, uh, the donate thing has got so many, we just need to work on M-Pesa uh, because people will give you money on M-Pesa very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But anybody else who wants to transfer money can be asked to contact us, then we can provide more details. So that element of how to give uh, mm -hmm. is very, very important. And then also a contact person then uh, mm. then can uh, provide feedback would also be very important. So a contact person and MPSA tab, I think, needs to be very visible. Okay. Yeah, those are my comments. Now, uh, regarding such kind of a campaign, and that's why I started engaging Kenya Wildlife Service, is we actually have a, have a, a moral obligation within the Conservation Alliance to do our own internal campaigns and address and support. And so uh, once we have uh, this banner ready, which I'm hoping that actually we can have it uh, completed today, I would actually want to have that discussion with Kenya Wildlife Service and find out whether they may want to partner with us to that effect. But I know the, 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 the response is so urgent that even the time to put procedures and every necessary uh, actions in place may not happen. So that's a consensus that I'll be seeking from them, that uh, the Alliance has a mandate to reach out. And so as we reach out, we are going to put uh, transparent measures where we account for each and every donation that is given, and uh, we make it public. And even when, um, when uh, support is given, it is also done in a transparent manner. So that's yeah. what I'll be pitching to them. That uh, yeah. if they want, if they want us to, if they want us to, 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 to even have other forms of fundraising, we'll be open to that. If they want their logo to appear there, that would be fine. If they want to lead the process, then we would also demand the same accountability from them and see what happens. So we just want to ensure that uh, we are not in conflict with anyone and that whatever support we get, we are actually sharing it with them. So whatever government thinks, I think civil society have a right to reach out to the public. And to me, this is an opportunity for us to raise awareness because there are so many people who do not know that this crisis currently exists in the country. Um, Steve, uh, I think that, it, that, is, that is good. It's good to look at it that way. Um, we can borrow a leaf from what, um, from what the rest of the humanitarian organizations are doing um, outside government, they run campaigns. They, you know, sometimes they are count, county based, they are country, um, they are country based. So it doesn't necessarily mean um, uh, we have to have KWS on board uh, because wildlife is 
everywhere, you know, it's outside the, the protected areas. So, and we also have to realize that uh, one of the struggles KWS has had for years is actually they do not have the capacity to, 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 to monitor and manage wildlife outside protected areas. So, so I think we do have a clear mandate on uh, to support that. And one more thing I'd like to add is, um, I mean, it could, it could look a bit disappointing uh, that people don't look very engaged from the Alliance perspective. But I think to me, this is really the beginning of something new in the industry. Um, and I just hope that it's something that we'll keep doing. Next year, we'll do it better. There will always be droughts. Droughts will always come. Next year, we'll do better. The other year, we'll do even a much better job uh, being a little bit more proactive than it is right now. Uh, so I'm not really disappointed, but I'm actually am glad that we've actually studied something um, that we've not done before. Excellent, excellent. I've noted that actually we don't need KWS in this, and uh, maybe if the if if the title wildlife may raise an issue, let's look at it in terms of how we can remove it so that because KWS always associate themselves with so many things, but actually we are not limited. I don't need their permission to run the campaign. We can actually provide leadership, uh, just like John has put, and move on and see what happens. So Steve, is, Steve, Steve, my art. No, I, I disagree. We don't have to remove wildlife because, <laughs> you know, actually okay. wildlife belongs to all of us. You know, it, it, yes. it's you and I. Um, so if we remove wildlife, I don't know what we're going to call it. Animal? Animal could, make a, could mean a pig uh, or something else. So let, let's just really own the whole process because yeah. we, we have a responsibility as a country, as citizens. To do to protect wildlife, you know, it's not just government that should do this. So yes, let's let's go on. Okay, thank you, John. You know, at times I need I, I need to have that support from you guys, <laughs> so that then I know I can stand firm, knowing very well that uh, we're in agreement. Thanks, John. So let's retain that uh, uh, that agenda as long as we are very clear in terms of uh, of uh, the various uh, regions that we are actually going to raise money for. And thank you, Rabia, for supporting that. I appreciate. It. Good. So I think now it's a, it's a matter of just confirming and agreeing with the figures uh, that uh, we posted the information on the, on the, on the platform, uh, but we haven't yet gotten some feedback, but we just wanted some clarity. I know Rabia had uh, mobilized some resources for he uh, on, uh, on uh, in, in the other area and you are supposed to get back so that by the time we do the band and we next we ask, then it's about us reaching out to as many um, partners and as many people that are interested as we can uh, to support us. So I don't know, uh, between Rabia and Ismir, uh, we'll be ready to start. <clears throat> I will also give an update on what Anu is doing. Mm. Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry. I think John, uh, John, you can go first, and then um, for my update, I'd sent Sheila some photos and a video, so I'll take you guys through that um, after when it's my turn, basically. Okay. Good. Uh, I just wanted to add, Steve, uh, on the budget issue. Um, logistics really is very costly. Um, that's one thing that I didn't, I didn't put, but we should actually consider. These are vast. Uh, locations, the distances are long, the, rough, the roads are, are really bad if we have to transport anything. So in a way, when you look at an overall budget, you should actually put around 30% on, on the cost of moving things around. Excellent, thank you. So for you, for the 20 boreholes, we need to increase the amount to about 1.5. I remember we had that discussion, or does it mean that then the addition you are you, you are talking of now covers the, the uh, i'm talking about the, the cost of let's say moving the, the diesel from bohol to bohol or even uh, uh, moving um, the, the water tanks if we get them to the right locations uh, you might have to have a truck that will cost a bit of money so i didn't know how to cost that so okay. uh, so yeah yeah and you know every day i hear elephants have moved to a different bohol and 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 i understand it's actually communities are getting, becoming kind of causing the problem because they are denying elephants water, not knowing that these are very strong animals can always break pipes. So because everybody is worried how much, how much water I have, you know, how long is it gonna last? So uh, without thinking, they, they actually cause a much, much bigger problem. So 
but I think logistics is gonna just cost us a little bit more. Okay, that's great, thank you. I'll take a note of that. <clears throat> Rabia, over to you. Thanks. Um, okay, so when we last spoke, I engaged some people on the ground and um, we, it just so happened coincidentally, I think I messaged you and I phoned you even um, that there was two lorries in Garcen with hay. And uh, of course, it's not easy to get hay on our side. In fact, it comes all the way from Kajiado. And uh, the last time when we were not able to get hay from Kajiado for a different uh, project, we actually had to buy hay from, I think it was Nanyuki or Naivasha, and then it was brought to Nairobi, then it was brought to Garsen. So from our side, the logistics of getting the hay is quite difficult. Thankfully, we found a supplier who is bringing uh, quite a bit in, mostly for the, for the herders. Um, who are buying the hay at 450 shillings per bale. And I think I shared the costings with you um, for one truck, like one lorry of the hay. Um, hang on, I'm just going to get to that message right now. Yeah, one lorry uh, carries 800 bales of hay, so multiplied by 450, that's 360,000. That's just for the hay alone. Now, once we purchase this hay, it can be dropped off at the KWS um, station in, in Garsen. And then that will kind of be the point, like the central point where we're doing all the drop-offs for the hay. Now, I have asked um, uh, the warden what his costings would be for diesel, because I know today we ran out of diesel in the vehicles um, that are taking the hay, I'm still to get a response on that. Um, but yeah, I would say maybe if we budget for, I don't know, like 800 liters of diesel, that could take us through the month. Um, and then you're looking at the water issue from our side. I'm still again working on the costings for this, but within Kipini, we have our own water browser. So maybe if we can get some support for diesel, again, that would be really great. And um, I would look at pretty much the same costings. So about uh, 800 liters, which would take us through the month. And then this would service um, areas of Onido, Chakamba, um, and within Kipini and around Peketoni side, where we have a lot of uh, buffaloes straying out and going into the community. And we've actually had incidents where they've been poached. We had three buffaloes poached two weeks ago in Peketoni boys, six buffaloes um, that strayed got killed around Chakamba, which is on the other side of Kipini. So by dropping off this water, it would keep them kind of within. Um, and then you're looking at these other zones around um, Upper Tana River, where they have water points, but then it's sort of a situation of it's so dry that if you just, just go in Mwagamaji, like it's just going to seep into the soil. So we're looking at dam liners. I'm trying to get the local costing for dam liners um, in that area, which I will share with you hopefully by the end of today or tomorrow. So if it's in order and you give me the go ahead, I can actually put together like a full on budget for the, um, the dam liners and the uh, water drop offs and how much it's going to cost and how many locations we're going to do this in. So far, we've identified three for water. And for the hay drop-offs, we have four areas where we're doing the hay. Maybe Sheila, you can share some of those photos and um, the video that I sent you. Um, so these are photographs taken yesterday and the day before yesterday, where I just asked some friends and family for some support and we managed to raise 55,000. We bought, uh, I think it was 122 bales of hay. Um, so we're continuing to use that for the moment. Sheila, do you have those photos? Uh, 
uh, let me check and share. Just continue. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's my update for now. Um, maybe I can also uh, note the point of uh, poaching. You know, it has gone up because the wildlife are straying out in a search for pasture and water. And from our side, we've actually done, we've made quite a few arrests. We made an arrest in Hindi of three, um, three guys who had poached two buffaloes. And day before yesterday, we caught four who were in the process of skinning a buffalo that they had just poached in Kangawati area, which is around Kipini. So, you know, I mean, we're still kind of stretched very thin in between doing water drop-offs and yeah, just regular operations like anti-poaching. Um, so I would say like any assistance that we can get from KWS in easing that for us would be so great. I mean, I don't know how they would like physically do it in Lamu County because they they don't really have enough personnel to begin with which goes back to the security discussion that you need to have with Nancy. Like, we just can't operate with two KWS officers on the ground. It's ridiculous. That's true, that's true. Uh, in terms of, um, I would like us to get a little bit detailed. Uh, John, this also includes, uh, oh, I realize John has dropped, where yeah. we, we Rabia, you've, you've, you've actually outlined your areas in details and you know exactly the locations. Uh, I think I'll mm -hmm. engage John also so that John is able to give us the location so we know in Kajiado North which locations and which bowels are we talking about uh, so that when I'm talking to the various KWS teams that they are actually in the picture and they are in the know. And what we want to do, uh, or any partner on the ground, we just want to ensure that... Uh, we are supporting one another and that we are not taking too much support in one area. I think this is the whole purpose of coordinating this effort is to ensure that each and every area at least gets something uh, so that we don't have too much they getting into one area and then the other area ends up lacking. So that's a kind of coordination that I'll discuss with the various teams uh, so that when we are implementing it easier. Uh, Lori, can I, I can um, see, I can sorry. see Lori has, yes. I just have one, one question. Um, when you're, after you do the fundraising, are you going to disperse the funds through KWS or how, how will we manage that on a ground level is what I'm trying to understand. Uh, my understanding in terms of when the funds come, we of yeah. course distribute. If it is diesel, we will look for an accountable way of ensuring that the diesel actually gets to the people who are required. So if it is Kenya Wildlife Service, we'll sit down with them and look at the mechanism of actually getting the diesel to where it is required. If it is bales, like you've proposed, uh, we, will, uh, we will get the bales to Garrison. And then from there, uh, the person then on the ground now uh, working together with you would be responsible then now to ensure. I think what we want is high transparency and accountability that actually mm -hmm. whatever we are giving gets to the areas that are required. Uh, we are running away from issues to do with money because at times money just ends up disappearing. But I think the product is the one that we actually want to deliver. I don't know, yeah. I don't know whether that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I mean, from our side, again, we've identified the supplier who is bringing the hay in. It's just a matter of, yeah, I mean, give him the cash and he gives us the hay. Um, and I suppose we could do like M-Pesa, which would kind of be evidence of the transaction. Um, there was a photo up there earlier. So these are photos from yesterday and the day before yesterday. Like I said, just between friends and family, I raised 55K. We bought 122 bales of hay. So this is um, an area where we have a lot of uh, buffaloes that are really in dire straits and the hippos as well, mostly because of lack of pasture. So maybe you can go to the next photo, Sheila. Um, so this area is a place called Ngumu. 
And then the other place where we did the day before yesterday is near Gamba, um, where we actually have like a huge pod of uh, hippos. This is in Gumu also. Um, and you can see like the buffaloes are super skinny there. Uh, we actually had some uh, buffaloes that was about six buffaloes that had been stuck in the mud in this area and uh, they were not able to be saved. They were already dead, basically. Um, do we have another photo? I shared a few. Okay. Sorry, I'll just take you through them once as they come up on the screen. Actually, actually, one of the things that has just come out is uh, maybe Sheila, again, we need to explore and see whether we can do a video presentation, just a picture, a, a picture or kind of video presentation to kind of back up this uh, campaign as we reach out for more support and more resources. If we have authentic images coming from the ground, then we can say this is coming from this place so that we are not accused to to pick images from all over the place. So I think authentication of images would be mm -hmm. a very good starting point so that we actually own uh, and we can actually prove and say that this is not a fair campaign. So for example, if you've got something about, um, about uh, images of buffaloes that are stuck somewhere and we can conclusively confirm that that's actually happening in Tana River, I think that's the kind of thing we need so that we build an update even as we give support we need to have something running so that people can actually see that there is action on the ground happening. Thank you so much, Rabia. But I think continue, continue, Sheila, uh, with the images because Rabia will shed more light to us. And I can see we've got uh, uh, Paula, Lori, and Olivia who have joined us. So welcome to the discussion. Rabia is giving us a brief on the images that she's collected in the Tana River area. Yes, over to you, Rabia. Yeah. Okay. So this is also in um, the first location that we responded to near Gamba. It's called Burarahma, and there's a huge population of buffaloes here. We are not really facing a challenge with poaching of these buffaloes because the community don't really eat them, but you know, they go into the mud and then they get stuck and they die. Um, and there's also a huge issue with lack of food resource. So that's why we mobilize the hay for them as a priority. Um, maybe you can go to the next one, Sheila. Um, I think there's also a video. So the, a lot of the team is in Mombasa at the moment. They're doing like some security workshop or something. So this is just some guys in the community. Actually, this brings me to another point. Sheila, we can go to the next photo. Um, Steve, you know, uh, while we're doing all these kind of relief efforts, a lot of times we rely on some members of the community like to do the hay distribution or whatever like to make sure that they are chungaring the hay and people don't come and start taking the hay for the cows because we nearly have that situation and so if we can even allocate like some you know like an allowance or something for maybe two or three members of the community at each location it doesn't have to be anything big but just something small to kind of also keep them motivated to be a part of, of the efforts. Um, Sheila, do you have the video? There was I a video. I'm not able to share. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, I'll share the video on the group then. Um, thanks, Sheila. I'll share the video on the group then, um, Steve, but it's basically a video of, um, you know, when KWS went to do the hay drop off, they found a buffalo really badly stuck in the mud. So they were just pulling him out, basically. Um, so yeah, I think that's all for my updates. Uh, in terms of like budget allocations, I would say some allowance for the community members that are assisting. Diesel, dam liners, water, yeah, and logistics and hay. My, my, my comment on the dam liner Rabia 
is mm -hmm. uh, let's look at it in terms of also long-term measures that we can do if there is a place yeah. where we where, where you actually require to put a dam liner now it might actually help us in the next drought that at least uh, you know we're not able to use too much water so we need to think about the design and where to get it and i can give you some contacts of um, of uh, some irrigation companies that actually do have dam lines so that we compare the cost and then mm -hmm. also look at it and see what's the size, size of dam liner that we require in the area because i do believe that this is the perfect time actually to do that project right now if we need to dig and put dam liners this is the best time that sounds so, good yeah Thank for the sake of uh, those who have uh, joined us, uh, allow me to share you an update. Then, Paul, I'll give you an opportunity to talk. Uh, we are receiving uh, updates in the last, in the previous meeting. Uh, we had Anno who reported on what's happening in Garissa, and then we had John Kismir who reported on uh, on, on on intervention required in Kajiado North and uh, Kajiado East. Uh, and then Rabia, uh, who is uh, giving us an update on what's happening in the Tana River area. So you came in when Rabia was sharing with us a few of the features and the interventions that are happening on the ground. And last week, Rabia was able to mobilize through uh, family friends, 55,000, and they bought uh, a few uh, bales of hay, and a bale of hay is going for 450 sheets. And uh, she was just, um, you know, showing us images of how the is actually given to the buffaloes and the hippos uh, that are struggling to get resources, you know, are struggling to access uh, water. And uh, there is some slight water, and there is some little initiative happening in Tana River, but there is more that is required in terms of supporting uh, the distribution using the water bowser, and then also uh, supporting communities. Uh, that are actually uh, distributing the hay and ensuring that uh, it's not stolen uh, and probably repacked and resold again to us. So those are the few updates that Rabia has shared, including also other areas that require uh, dam liners to be put in place uh, to retain water. Uh, from Garissa last week, uh, Kahindi uh, briefed us that the goodwill in Garissa is amazing because communities are actually sharing water with uh, wildlife, and there's a booming population of uh, wildlife, particularly near the watering points. And uh, the goodwill exists in uh, Garissa region, and we, uh, Kaindi reiterated that we needed to tap onto that existing goodwill because they are providing water for both livestock and wildlife at the same time, and they are not discriminating. In fact, according to the ground assessment, uh, Garissa was a little bit unique uh, in the sense that, uh, in the sense that uh, communities were also valuing that wildlife also requires water. Uh, the other update that uh, we got from Garissa is that the Madenge species has actually uh, grown and uh, has made it impossible for livestock and wildlife to access uh, Tana River uh, to drink water. And this was a specific request that came from the KWS warden in charge of uh, Garissa, where he needed some little money to clear Madenge uh, so that uh, they can create a path for both livestock and uh, wildlife to get in. Garissa has a booming population of the reticulated giraffe, and uh, they were able to take images of giraffes and livestock everywhere at the same place. So the greatest need in uh, Garissa is uh, diesel. Uh, because they are, they are diesel-driven generators and uh, because now they are pumping water more regularly than they used to. So the cost of uh, diesel uh, is one of the areas where they need more supply for diesel. Then uh, John gave us a brief. Uh, John was with us earlier on, uh, but, he, but he, he's, he's dropped out. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll pick it up with him. But John, but John reported to us. But uh, in uh, Kajiado, it's a little bit different. Communities are only taking care of wildlife and they are not uh, incorporating, no, they are taking care of livestock, but they are not also incorporating like, uh, wildlife in the watering, in the, in the, in the watering program that uh, you observe. And so uh, 
he, his, his biggest request is that the cost of this uh, the rate oh, no, no, no. Of uh, to the visa, vaccine uh, to the area is uh, to be a big hmm? challenge. Oh no, you Sorry. should have asked. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Uh, so Kismir was talking also that we need to consider the logistics of getting the diesel uh, to the to the to the boreholes that are in, and we also need to factor in the transport logistic of getting the diesel because of the distance uh, between the boreholes and the terrain that is there. So in a nutshell, we also agree that we are going to start uh, a fundraising, and we have a banner, a draft banner that has been prepared which we want to edit and we want to reach out to the conservation fraternity and also reach out to, uh, to, to post this request on social media uh, so that we can raise the resources. And uh, we've discussed about um, issues to do with transparency and accountability so that we can account for each and every penny that is given. And at the same time, that uh, what we'll be distributing based on the resources that come is actually the product. So if it is hay that is required, we will be distributing hay to where it is required, and then the distribution mechanisms that will be done by the KWS teams and the NGOs that are on the ground. If it is diesel, uh, we have already mapped out to find out the petrol stations that are there. In Kajiado, we have Shell and Total. We'll be reaching out to these companies to see what kind of support they can also give us uh, in terms of uh, identifying the places where fuel can be accessed. Uh, but then now the detailed logistics now is how the fuel moves from these petrol stations now to the pump station. So that's what we discussed today. And uh, because Paula had raised her hand, I would like to give her an opportunity to talk. Karibu, Dr. Paula. Uh, hi, guys. Sorry, I'm in the car. I'm actually trying to get my vaccine. It's crazy. Um, oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, uh, well, no, it's not nice because I have a problem. I took the Russian vaccine and it's not accepted anywhere in the world. And now, no, the government of Kenya will not give me the other vaccine oh. because they're saying they don't know if they can mix the vaccine. So it's unfortunate. So now I'm stuck. I'm actually at Kenyatta Hospital. Look at that. Trying to get the, the J&J &J as my last resort. Okay, uh, let me jump out. Yeah? So I wanted to say that first, I think we need a, we need some some more information like a, uh, oh, just one second. I need, I need my bag, that little bag down there. I need, we need, um. We need a proper map of of a, a map of all of the drought areas. You know, it's very hard for us to come to in what's the word to ask people for support, and we don't have we haven't quantified how big this problem is. Can we get IUCN or somebody to give us a map? What is the seriousness of the of the drought situation, and where? Where are, so we're saying we're going to be dropping hay and whatever. How much impact is this going to have? I think we need to we need to quantify the scale and make an appeal. I think way way beyond conservation community, Steve. I think if we do this properly and we get a PR company to help us, we can we can start locally, obviously with our conservation organisations, but raise money from the conservation organisations to design a bigger campaign, like a proper global campaign. Look at all these petitions, avas, and all these things to help us, and uh, make sure you ha we have KWS on board. I think that's really important. Um, photos, videos, really important. Can I asked Victoria to join this group because what would be really awesome is to have some everybody who's out there filming or photographing. Let's get it done in a way that we can use it for the campaign. So, really well taken photographs for the purpose of a communication campaign for it to be effective because you know if you think about that fellow Samuel uh, was his name Samuel the guy who did the the Bowser with the mm -hmm. yeah it's I mean Samuel. he raised over, he raised over a million dollars right mm -hmm. we should even reach out to him that money has not even been spent so so if he can raise one a million dollars just on one tiny little video of a of a water bowser driving around. Imagine what you can do if you get a good PR company behind you to make something. And there's plenty of good people in Kenya who would be willing to do it, I'm sure. Um, and uh, can you overlap the uh, drought situation with the 
data from the census so that we can actually show some of the most important areas in Kenya are some of the most threatened as well. That was my suggestion. Okay. A wildlife uh, direct would be happy to help you because you need to get, if you're going to get um, international donations, you need a 501c3. So you need to find out, figure out which company or which mechanism are you going to use to, to bank the money. You need to think about it carefully. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I have to go now because I'm, I'm at the hospital trying to sort things out. But okay. please do keep me informed because uh, I have plenty of friends all over the world and I'm pretty sure we can even ask WWF. These, you know, these big international organizations can mobilize funds faster. Excellent. Thank you so much, Paula. We've taken note Sour. of that. I, I, I just wanted to let you know that actually the Ministry of Meteorological Department actually keeps on giving updates on the job situation. And I know the Minister of Water also is working on uh, distributing water. I think we need we need that. to start sharing those maps and talking and, and the predictions. We need to predict what will happen if we don't do anything, because we need yes. to justify why are we doing something. Yeah. Okay. Sawa, sawa. Okay. So Bye, everyone. Thanks. All right. And well done. Thank you. Welcome, Pat. Uh, for the meeting, we just received an update from uh, Paula in terms of what needs to be done. We will uh, brief you later, uh, but we also want to hear from Lori. I know Lori, you're doing a fantastic job in raising awareness in the Tabo area. Uh, is there anything you want to update us on? This is actually an update meeting in terms of where we come up with an action. Uh, but when we hear from Lori and uh, Olivia, we should be able to again, bring all of us again up to speed on what has been discussed as a way forward, so that then we see how we work towards it. Hi, hi everybody. I, I, I'm sorry, I've been dealing with some personal things and I missed the other meeting, but we're doing a big school program in, in Sabo and one of the things is setting up tree fruit, fruit tree nurseries and we're discovering we took around guttering, we're finding that tanks that were already placed there have been destroyed by elephants. And this is, I've never seen it like this in my 20 years. I've seen them go for pipes and, and all sorts of stuff, but they're destroying tanks. And I, I asked um, Lucy uh, King, and there's some really expensive ways to put, you know, fence, big, big wide stone fences around them and stuff. But if there's any way we could find to protect the existing tanks and get any money to get more tanks, that would be a really important thing in the Savo area where it's just, I mean, the dry, I don't know the facts about the, you know, the meteorological level of facts, but it's terrible. The drought is just horrendous there. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I can say right now, but I'm, I'm really seriously looking for ideas. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, and uh, I think this is this is a situation that is not only unique to the uh, Savo conservation area. Uh, John also had mentioned the things, uh, had also meant a similar issue about uh, tanks being destroyed in the Kajado area, particularly in northern Kajado and, and, uh, and, 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 and the eastern part, not, not actually eastern, I think it was the western part of Kajado. Uh, where we were actually looking at it in terms of anybody who has got innovative ways of addressing the issue of protecting the tanks uh, would actually help us quite a lot. So that's why we are having this discussion uh, to see exactly how we can uh, pitch a case and how we can also find out who is doing what so that we can work with them. Uh, Karibu, Patricia, I can see your hand is up. Uh, yeah, thanks, Steve. Now, I wanted to know from Lori, um, whether this where is this uh, where is this tank that has been destroyed by elephants oh my goodness they're in schools all over the place um what is it gongodini some of them are in kishushe um there i think jipe is okay but i um i've got many many photos from my team that just came back so this um, is in the southern southern um, Savo, the Savo Conservation Area, yeah. But the southern part of Southern Savo Conservation Area. Is that right? Yeah, basically, yeah. And, you know, in the Titan Hills area, a lot of it, you yeah. know. Um, and I've never, as like I said, in all my years, I've never seen it 
like this. Um, and it's scary, like I was gonna put some tanks in schools right now, but they're really expensive and I don't wanna do that and have them destroyed, you know? And I want to be able to put the tanks in and have, you know, ideally have a little side bit for the wildlife, you know, and the people get some and, the, you know, but it's just, uh, it's such a task. Any guidance by anybody might have would be really appreciated. Hello. In the discussions that you have been having, has there been any um, uh, discussion about restoring the, the dams that have dried up in the, within the conservation area? That I haven't discussed. I haven't discussed it with KWS personally. Sorry, no, I was asking Steve. I'm so sorry, Lori. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I can, provide, I can provide an update on that. Uh, most of the river springs around uh, Savo, based on the PS uh, visit, the last meeting where we had, which we, we, we had about ten weeks ago, we actually uh, reported that um, most of the dams have dried up, and uh, the rivers are completely dry. And like Lori has reported, uh, nothing like this has ever been seen in the Savo area, particularly the southern part of uh, Savo. Uh, I think the part of the park, uh, there is some support and initiative that, that is happening, but on the southern part, it's not been that good. Uh, and uh, I am told also part of uh, Lake Jipe also, uh, because they also visited the area, uh, the, 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 the water also has reduced. And so what is required at the moment is to try and see uh, what kind of interventions can be put in place uh, first of all, to decrease because there's a lot of siltation in most of the dams in uh, Taita Tureta, uh, so that then it can be worked on. And I know there are groups that are working on that. Uh, so I can see Olivia's uh, hand is up. Uh, maybe we give Olivia an opportunity. And welcome, Vicky. Hi, thanks, Steve. Um, just a quick reaction from, uh, from Paula's comments. I'm wondering whether we can begin to have a uh, a media com media communication out so that the public uh, begins to know this. We're going to need a lot of uh, uh, support from the public uh, and also fund fundraising from the public and as well as from organization, both NGOs and private sector. So can we, with the information we have right now with the videos and the photos we have right now, can we now uh, blast our social media handles and even have an interview with the mainstream media just highlighting this issue and how grave it is. Yes, I, I do agree with you. Uh, and mm -hmm. for the sake of um, allow me just to do a recap of uh, what we initially thought and the ideas that are coming up. And that's why we love to have this uh, discussion so that we are very clear in terms of our approach. Uh, last week, we thought the issue would would, would probably be a little bit mild, but when we got the update from Garissa and we got the, up, the update from John and Kajiado, and we got the update from Rabia in Tana Delta, we realized that actually the issues on the ground are huge. And considering also the discussion I've had with uh, uh, Professor Musioki, who is in charge of parks and reserves in Kenya Wildlife Service, uh, the situation is uh, requires uh, an action. However, we are not hearing any fundraising efforts, or we are not hearing a lot of discussions happening. But we read on the media. Uh, this uh, actually it was yesterday that I saw the CS for Water Sisi Kaliuki was actually uh, making an initiative of uh, providing water in the Kuale area, and I think it was the northern part of Kuale. I also happen to have uh, had a session. Uh, with the CS for Agriculture uh, sometime last week. And he also discussed about the drought situation in Kuala has been bad. Uh, and so I know uh, everybody's trying to do what they can, but there is no place where this is done in a coordinated manner. And so for us, we are thinking that we can do a banner and uh, raise resources and then see how we distribute the resources in areas uh, that are in dire need. But then the, 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 the comments that we've received is saying, can we get more information and map up the areas that have been affected by the current growth, be able to know the extent uh, and also assess the quantity, how big is the problem, 
and also interventions that we intend to make, what is the impact of those interventions in terms of the scale? And then number two, also, how do we go and raise money to the public? Uh, and how do we ensure that they are accountable structures? And how do we also work with Kenya Wildlife Service and everybody else? Uh, and again, uh, those are then now some of the things now that we want to explore and see how uh, we can uh, also do the media communication because in the past there has been this tendency. Uh, we did a similar thing with Chile last year, I think when the fires came and uh, we posted something about raising money and KWS did not take it very well at that particular point. So we wanted to discuss and find out whether a mechanism like that is available. Uh, YLF Direct through Paul have also said they can also raise money using the 501 status with the US, particularly they are raising money uh, outside the country. Uh, so there is also that possibility. So I think the discussion on uh, raising resources and raising awareness, it's something that I need to pick up that discussion with Kenya Wildlife Service and see whether uh, they will have issues with it. And if they have issues with it, whether they can allow us to do that. And if they allow us to do that, then we also have to agree on what kind of messaging are we going to work on uh, so that it does not um, uh, it does not uh, bring some areas of conflict between what we are doing and uh, what Kenya Wildlife is doing on the other on the other side. But also, we agreed that uh, we do not actually need approval from Kenya Wildlife Service to raise resources to do it because as an organization, the alliance is actually mandated to raise funds as so long as we are transparent and accountable in terms of how the funds are utilized, uh, that we can actually just go ahead as so long as we work with the various teams on the ground to ensure that the support reaches to the areas where it is required. So these are just part of what we discussed, but we would like to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, hear your views on um, what has been shared earlier on in terms of how we proceed, because we definitely need resources. And we are not just looking at resources for intervention right now, but we're also looking at resources in the long term. Uh, today we are addressing droughts, tomorrow it will be fires, next time it will be floods. So when it comes to drought response, we're actually looking at it, including also floods and fires. We actually want to build the capacity and get the right equipment so that when the situation happens, that we are able with our, with our various teams on the ground to be able to act on that. On the fires, I think we've done a fantastic job. Uh, the fires have been dealt well. We haven't yet faced the situation of floods, uh, but that's again something that we need to start preparing in advance. And now we are presented with the issue of uh, water scarcity. Rather, I can see your hand is up. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Actually, I just have uh, three points. Firstly, uh, I note um, Pat's comment on the chat, how can we assist KWS to restore water pans or dams within the parks to reduce the strain of water outside the parks? Um, so just a point to note, which I mentioned, I believe in the last meeting, uh, you know, we don't exactly have parks in our area. So Yoteni Conservancy or like other forms of protected areas. So just to note that when we're putting these plans together, it should include all protected areas. Secondly, um, on the issue of uh, yeah, this uh, apprehension that KW KWS might have um, on CAK fundraising. Uh, I mean, the situation is what it is. They simply do not have the capacity to deal with what is going on on the ground at the moment. And a prime example of that is the case that I gave you in the last meeting where a giraffe was looking for water, fell into a water trough. They couldn't get him out, so they shot him instead. And the thing went absolutely viral on, you know, local TikToks and WhatsApps. Um, and it ended up making KWS look actually very, very bad because had they engaged other stakeholders in the area, had they called me, uh, we would have just put together the funds somehow to get a crane or whatever we needed to do to get the giraffe out of there and avoid a really messy situation. So I feel like they should really um, be more open to the support that uh, people are willing to extend um, and that CAK is now willing to extend in a time of crisis. Um, so that would be my comment on that. And then my third and final comment 
I'm afraid I forgot. But when I remember, I shall put my hand up again. Okay, excellent. So there are there are two things that are coming out very clearly. Is one of it that is there are several organizations that are willing to help, and we just need to put our facts right and be able to reach out to them and see where they can support. I can see L'Oreal's was posting. They have a 501c status in the UK, in the US, and they also have a charity too in the UK. So I think we have uh, potential to be able to mobilize resources from our various institutions. And I can see Olivia is here, uh, who is also representing WWF. Uh, can I request that um, between us who are here, let's form a team or let's form a small committee that will work with the secretariat, number one, to identify the gravity of the issue itself. And we can do this working with information that we will have gotten with the KWS team, so that then we can define the, the, the scope of the of um, uh, the scope of the drought in terms of the regions that are affected. And if there is intervention that is happening, uh, where the gaps are, so that then we form what is called now a need response strategy, so that then now we can share this now in the next meeting, also with, um, with, uh, with others, so that then we can define exactly how we are going to raise resources. If we agree that the resources will be raised through CAK, CAK is ready to do that, but I know also we cannot limit other organizations also from raising. So we need to agree exactly how we coordinate the issue of uh, mobilizing uh, resources uh, to, for, for this uh, intervention. That would be my, my, my proposal, that if we can have a team composed of YLF Direct, composed of WWF, composed of LORI, and then of course with the Secretariat, then we'll be able now to work with the KWS teams uh, to kind of, you know, uh, see how exactly we will push this. And unfortunately, because of the holiday coming, uh, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow will be a public holiday. We <laughs> seem to have very, very little time this week actually to get a few things happening. And I know there is also uh, information that has been shared by the meteorological department on the areas that are affected by drought. We already have those reports. So we just need to pick these reports and put them together, work with the teams of KWS and find out what is the need on the ground. Then we also need somebody, we also need somebody to quickly reach out to the Ministry of uh, Water, find out what interventions are they doing. Because what I read <coughs> recently is uh, the CSC, you know, providing water in Kuale, but we also want to find out how the water department is also responding to this water scarcity, particularly on the drought stricken country. So I think we need to work at CAK level, but also be able to know what KWS is doing and also be able to know what the Minister of Water is doing. And eventually I know the Minister of Tourism and Wildlife might also be interested. So if that becomes something, then we need to see then how we sit down and agree. So I open again, I want to hear your suggestions on your, your your, your thoughts on my proposal that we form a small committee that works with the secretary to push this agenda. Uh, also, um, earlier on, Sheila had done a small banner in terms of uh, uh, which we wanted to use to raise awareness on the social media platform, and at the same time also use it for fundraising. So we've agreed that that team also can also look at that banner uh, and see also how we bring in also the issue of raising awareness through the media as has been proposed by Olivia, uh, and, 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 and media and fundraising actually been done at the same time. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Mm, I just have one, uh, one comment slash question um, that I remembered. So I'm for the idea. I think that we need to have a, a, a good or a better structure in how we are kind of executing this plan. Um, and so my suggestion or my question would be for, we already have identified some problem counties. So obviously there's Kajiado, Garissa, Tanariva, Lamu. I'm based between Tanariva and Lamu counties. 
And I believe Anno has been active in Garissa. And then we've got John Kisimir in Kajado. So how, do, how does the Secretariat feel <clears throat> about uh, us stakeholders on the ground or identifying one person or one organization on the ground in each of these counties that can then gather the information from KWS, possibly even develop a full-on budget together with KWS and then submitting that to the Secretariat for action. I think that that might make things a bit easier and it'll be in a much more structured way and it'll be sustainable for kind of looking at long-term solutions rather than you know, like that's all good for like viral stuff online, but how, what is the impact really on wildlife that we're trying to make? We need lasting solutions for this drought so that during the next drought, we already have put in place and established those systems with which we can work. That's just my suggestion. So, I mean, if, if that is agreeable to everyone, then for us, we are willing to be the the point person or the point organization for Tana River County and Lamu County, possibly. Excellent, thank you. Any other views? Hello, Steve. Um, yes. Just to to build on to Rabi's uh, Rabia's uh, point, I think we need we definitely need to to have this committee in place because I see three streams that need to run concurrently. There's the aspect of uh, gathering the data on the ground. And uh, as Rabi has put it, we need people who are on the ground in the affected counties to give us the actual data. Then it needs to be compiled and shared uh, with different people from KWS to, to NGOs and, and even to private sector uh, partners who can help. Then we need uh, at least a few people thinking around how can we uh, mobilize funds. So uh, some of the immediate actions in mobilization of funds were mentioned by Paula. And then we need uh, also a team that within us that is working on communication that is constantly uh, updating on uh, social media and even organizing for, for press briefings so that we are, we are constantly feeding the public with uh, factual information and how they can help. I'd be happy to be part of the team. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. I think we have, uh, yes, yes, Pat. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, I think these are all um, excellent suggestions and I think it's very important to use the existing machinery as opposed to reinvent, reinventing the wheel to avoid um, either duplication of efforts or disenfranchisement by those who are already operating um, on the ground. And so perhaps when you know, putting together this uh, secretariat, you know, it would be useful to have first you know, to identify um, who, all the players uh, on the ground, as, 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 as Rabia has said, um, in the different um, areas who can um, not only feed into um, feed in information, but also who have got infrastructure on the ground that can assist with um, provision of water if the resources provided are able to, to, to do something uh, constructive about it. Um, I'd also caution about, you know, even when sharing information ensuring that um, the communications, it happens hand in hand with, especially in the protected areas with, uh, with the KWS, um, because you want to, to do a harambe rather than um, individual effort, you know, suggesting that others are not doing anything and perhaps prioritizing the wildlife just so that um, GOK also doesn't feel like it's being implied that they aren't doing anything. I think certainly where um, there are people who are working already with the communities and where you have, for example, TTWCA, where the opportunity to be able to help both is there because of the structure that exists there. I think it's very important to, 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 
to use these, these structures so that um, the dissemination of how this happens, not only will it happen for now, but in future, in case there is something that comes up, they can be like an early warning system so that it's, you know, essentially a structure that is established that is uh, there for now and also for the future. So that for those who are, are asking, you know, how can I help, you know, in terms of resources, that there's very specific direction because people will not just give money to put into a kitty. Well, some might, but many will want to know exactly where is this uh, going. So I think by mapping, you know, using the, the people who are on the ground and mapping um, the different areas where interventions are required and making use of those who have helped with that mapping to, um, to directly intervene with resources that are provided um, might be a useful way to go. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Pat uh, and everybody else who are sharing. Uh, here is um, the way forward in terms of how we proceed. We will uh, form the committee and we are going to have everybody who attended today's meeting be part and parcel of the committee. Uh, Paula had indicated that uh, Vicky will be attending this to represent uh, Wildlife Direct. And so, uh, Vicky, I hope you've been briefed on that. That's what Paula indicated earlier, that all of us translate into a committee. And uh, Sheila is going to coordinate the meetings of this committee. And uh, one of the terms of reference of the committee is that um, <clears throat> Rabia, who has who actually is on the ground and has a very good connection with the KWS team in Tanarif and Lamu, will actually speak to the respective KWS representative in that area. And then uh, John, who is uh, representing or who is uh, giving us an update on Kajado County, we will also connect him with the KWS team on the ground. Uh, and then uh, we will have Anno also, whom we are going to connect with the KWS warden in uh, Garissa, uh, as we also look at the other five other areas, because KWS gave us contacts of other five uh, regional uh, people who are coordinating this, so that then the CAK membership deals with KWS team on the ground to identify what the needs are and what interventions are required. Uh, so that then when we sit as a committee, it is not CAK as a secretariat having a separate engagement with Kenya Wildlife Service, but we are actually synchronizing everything and discussing with the group so that when we come now to implementation, it actually flows uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of coordinated manner and that there is there are not so many people speaking to KWS. I think the whole idea is that we want to have one channel of communication. And so what we'll do as a secretariat is we will then write and say uh, that so and so who is uh, coordinating KWS activities, our contact person is so and so for this other and that person then will report to us and that person will report to you on whatever actions that we come up with. If that is agreeable, then the agenda of the committee will be, as um, Olivia rightly put it, is to gather data and compile and share and then another team would be responsible for resource mobilization. And that's precisely the reason why Vic is, is here to support us, particularly in uh, taking relevant pictures that we can use then now to support the team that is working on communication uh, and then also resource mobilization. So if that's agreeable, then I think we have a fantastic approach to move on. <clears throat> Okay, so can we adopt that moving forward so that we translate this into a committee and uh, Sheila is going to do a report of whatever actions that we have. And then from there, uh, I know tomorrow is a public holiday. There is not much we can achieve, but between Thursday and Friday, let's try and see how much we can push. Uh, but the letters will be out and they will be sent to the various KWS leads on who to, and on who to talk to them and whatever information they give then that's the information that the team will actually provide to us. And then further, lastly, I'd actually forgotten that, that we're actually going to have um, a WhatsApp group specifically 
that will be discuss, discussing this uh, drought issue so that we don't take it to the larger. But even though we will still report in the bigger CAK group, uh, but then for coordination and getting actions and posting and getting things done that will actually create a separate WhatsApp group for these initiatives to move forward. Is that okay? Do I have a consensus on that? Excellent. I can see Rabia has uh, given the consensus, same to Pat. And uh, George Maina has joined us. Uh, George, thank you for joining us. Olivia also has given a consensus. That is great. George, could you just introduce yourself? You've joined us at the time when we we're just uh, actioning. Thank you, George. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am George Miner. I work for the Nature Conservancy uh, as a fisheries manager, and I'm based in Mombasa, Kenya. Excellent, George. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're actually discussing about the areas that are affected by drought, and uh, we're just organizing ourselves in terms of collecting the data and identifying what is required on the ground. Uh, so that then as we make a request in terms of what support is required, that we are very, very clear in terms of what is required and now we distribute that support onto the area. So do feel welcome and uh, we've just established this committee and uh, do feel welcome also to join the committee. Let us know whether you want to join the committee that is looking at this drought intervention. And I know because you are working in the coast, uh, you might also be able to share some updates in terms of what's happening on the coast. Uh, that might be of importance. Yeah, thank you for the update. I'll be following and contributing. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, so I would like to bring the meeting to a close. And uh, when Sheila adds you onto that group, uh, just know that it's for the purposes of executing and sharing information that would actually help us uh, come with this action. And because these are weekly meetings where we receive updates, and also we give, uh, we report on progress that has been made. Uh, will it be okay for us to have again our session next week on Tuesday at 10 o'clock as we did this week? All right, by show of hands is Tuesday next week, 10 o'clock, okay? All right, yeah, Laurie is saying yes on our side. Olivia is saying yes, okay, fantastic. So our next briefing meeting will be on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. But in the meanwhile, let's have uh, lots of actions and engagement done on WhatsApp. So thank you so much. Rabia, I can see your hand is up. You have something before we close? Oh, the sorry, I was just gonna say, um, I may or may not make it for the meeting depending on my network availability because I'm leaving on Thursday to go back to Tana River and I have serious network issues. However, I will continue to keep everyone updated via the WhatsApp group. And in case of any um, urgency, I will contact you separately on WhatsApp with a voice note or something. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But we'll do a letter and we'll copy you with a letter so that then now you become the contact point with Kenya Wildlife Service. Mm -hmm. So those letters Thanks. I think should be out before close of business today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So the meeting is adjourned until Tuesday next week at uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you. Bye.